Hey guys, my name is Matsumio, and today I want to take a look at all 11 weapons that are going to be featured in Star Wars Battlefronts. Uh, first of all, I figured you guys would just like to see every single one of them in action, but also to go over their strengths and weaknesses, and why you might want to use one over the other. And so the first one that we have to look at is the DL-44 pistol. This has quickly become one of my favorite weapons in the game because of its insane damage output. As long as you're able to close the gap, this is a close encounter weapon, you will two-shot your enemy. It doesn't seem to matter where you hit them on, the, on their body, as long as you have the accuracy to back it up, you are going to ruin people in those circumstances. The caveat to this though, and to make sure that it's not blatantly overpowered, is that it does come with some heavy drawbacks. Uh, first of all, it does not come in fully automatic mode. You're not able to just spray down range. It also reduces its damage quite heavily at a distance, requiring three, four, or even five shots. And probably the biggest deal is that it's not the most accurate when you compare it to all of the other blasts. And so as long as you're not trying to snipe someone from long range, you're using it appropriately and closing the gap on your enemy with something like the bubble shield or the jump pack, in the right hands, this is going to be a dominant weapon in Star Wars Battlefronts. On the other side of the spectrum though, we have the EE-3. Uh, this is a three round burst weapon, but unlike the DL-44, which is incredibly inaccurate, this thing is basically a laser beam. This is going to be one of the best long range weapons in Star Wars Battlefront. Like if you want to snipe someone on Hoth or you're playing on Walker Assault and you need to take people out at long range, this weapon is going to be right up your alley. The thing is though, and something that surprised me about it, is that it also does relatively well up close. You would assume that a gun that excels at long range combat would have the negative drawback that as soon as the enemy is able to close the gap on you, that they would have the advantage. That doesn't seem to be the case with the EE-3, at least in the right hands. It has a very fast rounds per minute. Basically, as fast as you squeeze a trigger, more shots are gonna fire out of the gun, and so while it probably will require more skill on the part of the player because it is a burst fire weapon, you can't just hold down the button and kill your enemy that way, uh, it also does relatively well up close because of that faster rounds per minute. Uh, moving on over to one that I was a little less impressed by though, we have the T21B. This is basically a designated marksman rifle. It's semi-automatic, it has a low rounds per minute, but it's meant for taking people out at a distance and does a lot of damage if you're able to line up your shots. I was having a hard time with this one. I don't know if it was simply because I'm bad at the game, I don't know if it was just because I didn't understand how to use it appropriately, but for a weapon that is advertised for using at a distance, it has a very slow travel speed. You'll notice through the gameplay that it just kind of lethargically flies through the air, and so hitting a moving target, especially a target that knows that you're shooting at them, is very challenging. And so maybe I just need to put more time into the game, maybe I just need to use it more, uh, but this was one that I was a little disappointed by. Uh, moving on over to some of the heavy blasters, we have the new RT-97C. This one is a lot of fun. It's very similar to the DLT-19, which many of us played during the beta, uh, but it's advertised and performs as a much more versatile weapon. It still has a high rate of fire, so it does well up close, but it also has a scope on it that allows you to potentially snipe people out at a distance. I found during my playtime that it looks like this is going to be an all-around good weapon. It doesn't have really any major weakness to it, but it also doesn't have an awesome strength as well. And so if you're looking for a blaster that's all around going to do well in every single type of combat situation, uh, then I recommend trying out the RT-97C. Uh, speaking of the DL-19, uh, it's seen some changes since the beta. It no longer does as well at a distance. I know a lot of my friends were basically just using this the entire time because it felt like it was basically the best gun in the game. That's no longer the case. It still does very well up close with that high rate of fire, but they have reduced its effectiveness at a distance. And so I still recommend that you try it out, but know that going in that changes have been made. Uh, the only shotgun that we're going to have available in Star Wars Battlefront, though, is the CA-87. I'm not sure how I feel about this one, because on the one hand, it has the potential to be amazing. I had some incredible killstreaks with it, but on the other, it felt like it was very inconsistent. Uh, there were moments where I was directly behind someone. They had no idea I was there, I squeezed the trigger, I was aiming right at the center of their body, and I didn't even get a hit marker. There were other times where I got a hit marker, but I only did about 80% of their health. 
There were other moments where every single person that I came across, like four or five people in a row, I one-shotted them. It didn't matter if they were like four feet in front of me or even like 20 meters away, I was nailing and killing them with that one shot. And so I don't know if it's just simply because I didn't understand how to use it appropriately, maybe I don't understand the mechanics, but I was not enjoying the inconsistency. And while I will recommend that you try it out because it's a lot of fun to use when it does work and you have those awesome moments, uh, just know that those inconsistencies are there. Uh, moving on over to the final two pistols in the game, we have the SE-14C and the DH-17. Uh, much like every pistol in the game, they're meant for close quarter combat, but I will say that the first time I read the description on the SE-14C, I didn't think that I was going to like it. It's a five burst weapon that's meant for taking people out up close. If that was description on any other weapon in any other video game, I thought that it would be garbage. Surprisingly though, I fell in love with this thing. Much like the EE3 in the right hands if you're skillful enough, this thing is amazing. You put two bursts into someone and they're up close, they're dead. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter how good they are, doesn't really matter where they sh you shoot them. Two bursts of this weapon with that high rate of fire and they're gonna drop. Uh, of course, you're not gonna wanna snipe people. It does reduce, significantly reduce damage at long range. But once again, as long as you close the gap, much like every other pistol in the game, uh, you're gonna have a lot of fun with this gun. Uh, as for the DH-17, not a lot has changed since the beta. It's still awesome up close. It pretty much performs exactly like it did. And so if you liked it during the beta, you are gonna feel right at home here. Uh, one weapon that has seen some changes since the beta though, is the E-11. According to DICE, and this surprised me, this was the most used gun during the open beta. I assumed that would have gone over to the Heavy Blaster, but no, I guess everyone was gravitating on over towards the E11. And so DICE took the statistic and they slightly reduced its effectiveness. It's still basically the same gun. I mean, I, I'll be completely honest, when I was using it during this live event, I didn't really notice any significant difference. It did feel like it was a little bit a little bit less effective in close encounter combat, but that was about it. It's still an amazingly high powered weapon. It's still going to dominate at long range. And so if you loved it during the beta, don't worry. It hasn't been nerfed into oblivion, but it's not going to be that powerhouse apparently where everyone is going to be using it when the game goes live. Uh, the last new blaster that we're gonna be taking a look at is the T21. Uh, this is basically identical to the T21B, but the drawback to this one is that it does not have an optic, so it's a little bit more challenging to snipe people at long range, uh, but the positive to it is that it is fully automatic. I wasn't all that impressed by it, much like the T21B. I mean, it's still relatively good at taking people out at a distance, but much like the other one, it has a very slow travel speed. And so maybe my opinion will change when the game goes live and I have more time to use this thing, uh, but I would say that this is one of the more mediocre weapons in Star Wars Battlefronts. Uh, and then finally, the very last weapon that we have available to us is the A280C. Much like in the beta, it is very well rounded. It doesn't really excel in any type of combat, but it also doesn't do poorly. And so if you're looking for a gun that's very consistent, I mean, this is probably the most consistent in Star Wars Battlefront, then I recommend giving it a go. Uh, but yeah, guys, those are all of the primary weapons that we will have available to us in Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, this, of course, does not cover all of the star cards in the game. There are some weapons in there, like the scout pistol. There is a sniper rifle. So there are some other weapons, but those, of course, will be on a cooldown. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what blaster you're most interested in. Is it the E3? You want to snipe people at long range? Are you really excited to get your hands on the DL44? You want to be Han Solo? Let me know down below. Uh, but yep, yeah, until tomorrow, have a good one and take it easy.